yes, give me a little wave if you can hear me. <laughs> yes, we can hear you, yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Nepal EU Film Festival. I'm Emma, I work for Cineropa, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, I'm actually live with you from Brussels in Belgium. Uh, it is a nice sunny Sunday morning, and I'm really excited to chat with you all. So let's get started. Um, I have to tell you, there is a simultaneous uh, translation available. You can click on the translation button at the bottom and pick uh, your language. All right. So the theme, the theme of our chat today is artistic and financial side of European and Nepali film production. So we'll start by introducing our speakers. Uh, live from Germany, we have Franziska Schönenberger and Jaya Krishnan Subramanian. They will talk to us about documentary and fiction, fiction filmmaking in between India and Germany. Can you please say hello and briefly introduce yourself, Francisca and Jay? Sorry. Hi, this is Jay Krishnan Subramanian and... Uh... Hi, I'm Francisca and uh, we are, as Emma said, two filmmakers who live and work between India and Germany. So uh, concrete, we, we are now in Munich. And normally also we... Uh, we are mostly traveling to uh, like south of India, Pondicherry and Munich. So so um, I have a documentary uh, background. Uh, I studied documentary filmmaking at the uh, Munich University of Television and Film. And, and uh, through my filmmaking, I met Jay. <laughs> So I was uh, I was from um, Chennai, like Tamil Nadu, India, and I studied uh, fine art and uh, I studied graphic design in National Institute of uh, India in Ahmedabad. Uh, and then I uh, studied uh, media art and design in Weimar here in Germany. And then we met in Mumbai and then we started making films first together. <laughs> films together. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually have another speaker today uh, from um, Nepal. It is Shikar Karel, um, who will talk about his experience as a documentary filmmaker. Shikar, can you please introduce yourself briefly as well? We have to have the sound. I cannot hear you. Let me see if it's something I have to do on my part to give you the sound. Yeah, I can see that your microphone is on, actually. It doesn't seem like it's working. It's unplugged. Okay, I propose that maybe you log off and log in again. We'll start with uh, Francisca and Jay, and hopefully we can have you later. Nope. Okay, I'm sorry, Shikar, we'll move on, but I will come back to you after. I will write to you in the chat. Okay. All right, actually, we have lots to talk about today. So without further ado, I will give the floor first to Francisca and Jay, uh, just letting you know that this masterclass will last approximately one hour and a half. And we'll keep some time at the end for you, all of your questions. 
So Francisca and Jay, uh, the floor is yours actually. Francisca and Jay, are you still with us? Okay, so far, yeah, now perfect. it's working. Can you hear us? It's working. Yes. <laughs> so I, uh, nice. Let me. Uh, so um. Let me share this uh, screen. Du mach das doch mal. Was? Vollbild. Uh, I can wait a second. This yes. The PDF. Okay. Uh, just, uh, Ich habe wohl probiert, einen Moment. Das ist just a... Okay, we need to do it like this. Weil Bild, wenn ich fullscreen... Okay, guys, I, uh, while Jay is trying to figure out how to make is his this... presentation fullscreen... Yeah. Ah, he worked out. Can you see it? Can you hear us? Yes, we can see it and hear you. Okay. Uh, can so, you also see this, uh, the presentation? No, we can't. It's oh. a black screen at the moment. Um, die Frage aber wieder. Okay. Mach, mach doch das jetzt einfach groß. Hier. Yes, now we yeah, can see you. Yes, okay. Yeah. Ja. Das muss halt jetzt groß ziehen. Äh, nur wenn es weiter sagen. Ja, das ist Fullscreen. Ist das voll? Oh. Irgendwo Fullscreen Look funktioniert full? nicht. I think the Fullscreen Modus is not working. Clashing with the Zoom. This also works. Just the second. So, Jay, maybe I try to figure out this and you are talking about who you are, what you do. So, um, so actually, we did, we, we started our career from uh, documentary filmmaking and uh, we are like do experimenting with fiction. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, so basically, I am coming from a graphic and visual. Uh, background and Francisca studied uh, documentary filmmaking in Munich and for the uh, for our first film Amma and Appa uh, like so we, we actually Francisca actually met me in Mumbai when she was searching for Indian artists to work with in India and then uh, she wanted to do a film about an Indian artist and somehow we met we fell in love and uh, we made Uh, this Amanda Papa film instead of the film which she actually planned. Where you can see the poster uh, the, on the right just, side. The poster on the right side. So um, so before I go uh, in in a little bit detail, I have a small structure so I can show the maybe the trailer of Amanda Papa film, and uh, we can go ahead. Just a second. How can I do this trailer now? Okay, the, I can stop this build stream and then I can open this. Just a second. Yeah. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, we can, yes. Okay, yeah, okay, then let's play it. <laughs> Eigentlich wollte ich nie heiraten. 
und die Prinzessin im glitzernden Weiß, das bin noch nicht ich. Lange Zeit war unsere Beziehung ein Geheimnis. Weniger Stress, meinte Jay. Doch eines Tages kam ein aufgeregter Anruf. Seine Eltern hatten eine passende Hochzeitskandidatin gefunden. Ein ganzes Jahr lang hatten Ama und Appa es geschafft, mich zu ignorieren. Doch schließlich wurde ein Treffen unumgänglich. Zu Hause kommt mir alles kalt und still vor. Man verliebt sich schnell mal. Also, ich meine, du hast ja schon immer so einen unheimlichen Fan für Indien schon gehabt. Mit, sagen wir mal, dunkelhäutigen hast du schon immer gut kennen. <lacht> ja. Das andere darf ich ja nicht sagen. Was heißt Hochzeit? Hallo? Also, Hochzeit heißt K. Ach, das Auto macht. I think uh, you guys uh, saw now so a little bit how it happened and how um, it came into being what we are doing. So um, basically also our way of filmmaking and uh, producing films and financing films is um, like something uh, between India and Germany, like it's a culture clash all together. Because also uh, the filmmaking uh, or the financing in India is completely different than in Germany. And I think um, Jay has made for us a little uh, presentation um, how we want to go on talking about it. So, yes. I think, uh, so I just uh, made a structure, like basic uh, structure. And then I will, we, will ex we will explain that uh, what we did in each uh, step, of the way. step of the way. So, uh, like, first there's a development, and uh, the important thing is ideas, and which is kind of we are always. Um, luckily, we are like we have a lot of ideas, and somehow. Um, like, But only hardly one get financed. Yeah, there is like. So there are a lot of ideas and uh, less money. <laughs> it's almost like we have so many eggs, and only one or two gets uh, get to become a chicken, or so, so that's the. So we have we are thinking so many ideas and uh, yeah. To, and uh, you yeah. could see um, the second poster in the beginning was from our short film. Um, Jay, can you go back, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, that's the reason short film we made. It's uh, called My Mirror, and it is um, like uh, it's a fiction. And um, we came to the idea of the film, or basically Jay came to the idea of the film because he just read an article in an uh, um, Indian newspaper. 
And uh, we worked there with a combination of actors and non-actors. So the um, the girl you see in on the poster is Adira Sukumaran. She's a, a Malayali girl who uh, studies in Germany and we met her and she's a non-actor. And uh, um, the husband who is playing the husband mm -hmm is a uh, um, Tamil, Sri Lankan Tamil actor from Germany. So, Jay, maybe you can just I go can... back to um, the second structure, to your structure. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, there you can see, um, we uh, when we started working, it went all uh, very organic. So, um, Normally we have an idea and then we just start working and we write a script and stuff, but for financing and for the broadcasters and in Germany, the financing system has a particular way of um, getting money. You have to be very structuralized and Germans love bureaucracy. So it all starts with a lock line. To know what we are talking about, maybe Jay will show um, another small clip from yeah. uh, our film, My Mirror. The fiction and um, yeah, and then we talk about both. how we worked on both and how we got the money together to make them. Yeah, just, just again, I go. Uh, what was this? My mirror. Just a second, sorry that. Ah, yes, this. Oops. Uh, can you see? No. Yes, it works fine. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So I can go back to this. Um, sorry, was the uh, everything visible or did you see in between um, just our screen? I was not sure. Yes, it was visible, yes. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Um, so um, we came to the idea of the film. Uh, as you can see, it works. Uh, it, it's a film made out of TikTok videos. And it's uh, based on a, a true story, um, which is that uh, a lot of Indian women, they like to do TikTok, but now it's banned in India, but before. And they got a lot of, uh, and there was a story of a woman who got a lot of attention through TikTok and she was unhappy in her marriage. And then her husband got really angry with her that she's doing all these clips and um, getting feedback, positive feedback from uh, guys, especially. And then he um, told her not to um, do TikTok anymore. And then she uploaded um, her suicide video on TikTok as well. In our film, um, I can say that uh, she survives in the end. And um, so we always um, get our ideas uh, from the reality and then 
find the, uh, the, the proper way to put it together, either in a fiction or a documentary or a hybrid. Um, however it works, and um, since Jay is from a um, graphic design background, he likes to experiment also with graphics. Um, and in animation, yeah. So in Amman Appa, we had also animation in the film, and um, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of uh, for my mirror. So we need to create all the graphics because the tic tac. Uh, I don't know if if we can use it because of the copyright issues. So we created our own app called My Mirror, and uh, so kind of we are working with uh, like reality and animation and. Uh, yeah, with all the possible way, which so we are creating our own hand, uh, like yeah, handwriting. Handwriting, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, basically, what we figured out is that all our films somehow have the topic of uh, couples and relationships and family. Maybe that's also because uh, we are married <laughs> and we have this kind of uh, we just take from our own experience and then try to put it into a film. So, um, Jay, can you uh, show the next slide, please? Yeah, okay. So, uh, and the financing. Um, we, we, we can come about this later in much more detail. So, this is a short introduction. Yeah. So this is uh, like um, a short introduction. Francisca will uh, tell detail how the financing works uh, in Germany. So uh, like first once we have the log line and treatment uh, and everything will be written and then we will be uh, sending it to uh, funders here in Germany or in television or we try to find producer who are interested uh, like for the long documentary we need a producer for short films that we produced ourselves because uh, for short films it's difficult to find a producer and that's how we also learned uh, like producing and uh, so we learn mostly some a lot of the things do it ourselves so we don't know anything before and then we just it is sometimes partly luck and uh, yeah and we had to do it because it's also a little bit of uh, in germany um a cultural thing um that you they will always ask you uh, for your qualification and you cannot get the qualification if nobody trusts you to uh, let you do your first film. And so somehow um, we had to uh, do it ourselves and prove that we can manage and then um, you get access to funds. So um, the Amma and Appa film was a little bit easier because it was still a film school project. So we had the film school in the background and they kind of helped us to get connected. and. Um, then uh, we got a little amount of money and we started shooting the film. So it's most, mostly from film school. They had all the equipment are free and the cameraman, like they are also st student uh, from the film school. So I think it's almost like we need to uh, somehow find the money for the travel and uh, we started shooting. Yeah, okay, then I can go to this uh, next slide. So it's, it's once we... So there is two different uh, method works in pre-production for documentary film and uh, for the fiction film. Uh, for the documentary, like we will have an idea from the treatment, and we will be starting. I mean, we'll start shooting, uh, like reacting, and we, we have some vague plan for the for, for example for Amma and Appa film. So it was uh, clear um, that my parents. Um, refused or in the beginning refused to accept uh, our uh, law and somehow we need to convince them and uh, so it, it is really clear like uh, we have an idea that Francisca should meet them for the first time and then um, then maybe uh, Francisca parents can meet them so it's already there is a, a idea that uh, it's automatically kind of a hero's journey structure it's it's luckily it, it is there and uh, so we worked uh, with this vague idea. Then we thought, what are all the things could, uh, like, what can happen? Worse happen scenario worse or best. Or best. Uh, so th th somehow we need to react. Uh, so we were shooting, like, um, I don't know, like uh, one year. One year. And it's, it's slowly like we, so each time we will react to the, what, what happened. And then so it's go back and work with the treatment and uh, think about it, new ideas. And uh, yeah. And uh, that's the 
So basically, um, every film for us is also a journey to learn new things. And Aman Appa was really a journey to learn things, also a, an emotional journey. And um, so, yeah, there you can see that uh, there are different ways of uh, we are making films. On the on the right side, you can see that we we shot with a proper equipment and um, a big camera and things like that in India. And the, uh, the last film you saw, the clip was my mirror and we just shot with an iPhone. So I think um, the, the first thing is a creative way also to... Um, to find the right form for the film and also maybe to find the right form for the amount of money you have. So um, obviously the budget for uh, a documentary uh, in the scale of shooting with a, a mirror or an Alexa or a big camera and uh, the post-production and everything will require a lot bigger amount of budget than uh, just go and uh, shoot uh, this uh, a short film with a mobile. Yeah, I think uh, so. There is a two extreme way uh, we worked, but in a in a way, this is uh, also there is similarity because um, for the documentary film, we only need a cameraman or us and sound. So it's really a small crew, and uh, we go there, we react, and we have idea, and then it's 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 work more spontaneous. And with the same method, we also applied uh, for my mirror. Uh, like we only went three people plus uh, two actors from Germany, both of them from like staying in Germany. And then we went there. And uh, so the, the camera woman is also from a documentary camera uh, background. And then she really adopted for the style of um, like spontaneous filmmaking. And uh, with the mobile, we we found it really uh, like interesting that uh, that day we don't need any uh, shooting permissions and uh, like things like that. And um, for example, for um, uh, to talk about how um, documentaries can lead to something else, the cinematographer you see on the right side, um, he is also the cinematographer for Nadine Labaki's uh, film, which was nominated for the Oscar, Kapanum. And he comes from a documentary background. He even... Um, he had our documentary footage in his portfolio and then he went on doing um, quite a career. So I think from documentary to fiction, there's a fluid uh, line. And um, I think you ju should just believe in your project and uh, go on with it and then find and you will find money for it. Yeah, I think for, for documentary, uh, like it's also understanding people and uh, character. So which helps really for the fiction. Uh, so that uh, is the post-production. It is really a uh, completely different method. And I think um, the workflow uh, you might know. And uh, for us, um, for me, it was something really to learn the workflow of animation because this is very planned. This is very structured. Everything is fixed in advance. And for a documentary, you don't know anything. You just go there and you re react to what is happening. So I think uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so distribution. <laughs> distribution is uh, something else. Um, we, uh, ha we made uh, two uh, long documentaries which had uh, the normal distribution way in Germany, which means you have, uh, um, you have them shown on television and in cinemas. And uh, the financing also um, is done like this, that you, that you first show it in the theaters and uh, you show it in the theaters, uh, you have the option to show it in the theaters for 12 months and afterwards it's shown on television. So you have already the two most important finances in Germany to finance your film. And um, yeah, so maybe we will go um, to that slide and then I will uh, talk a little bit about... And this is the last process that you need to submit everything, whatever. Yeah. So um, I will tell you a little bit about Germany in general and Germany in financing. So as you can see, Germany has um, Bundesländer or different uh, states. 
And all the different states have, as you can see on the uh, right side, um, different TV channels and broadcasters. Public, I'm talking about uh, public broadcasters, not private broadcasters. So as you uh, public broadcasters, something like the BBC in Great Britain, but uh, Great Britain has a centralized uh, government and they have only one public broadcaster and in Germany there are a lot. So you uh, can approach each and every one of them um, for money and each and every state in Germany has also a particular film fund, which uh, you can approach, but there are certain kind of rules and regulations to access this fund. So all our films, except my mirror, are um, co-produced, meaning a co-production of film fund plus um, um, TV pl plus money from a broadcaster. And uh, in Germany, no one actually puts um, private money into a film, and um, the producer actually is there to guide you and help you to access the funds and get the money together. So financing sometimes can take a long time. And uh, for our second feature documentary, it took quite a while. So we had been shooting already for one year on our own expenses uh, or one and a half years till we got the money together to make the film. And um, for my mirror, which you saw the short clip there, it was like this. We got really stressed with all this uh, broadcasters and funding and application and writing and stuff. So uh, somehow uh, we pulled our money together, got the tickets to India, convinced uh, um, Carla, the camerawoman, to come with us to India and we shot the film. And uh, we were lucky to sell it afterwards uh, to a broadcaster. So, um, yeah, maybe we can see the next slide. This is just... A... So here you can see again how many broadcasters there are in Germany. And, um, yeah, there, to figure all these things out, it took quite a while for me also. And there are also... Um, always responsible uh, commissioning editors for a particular kind of topics. There's, for example, Kika, which is a uh, channel especially for children's films. There you can get money, for example, for children's films. You might know um, Arte, which is a cultural channel and which is also financing a lot of films from abroad. And basically, if you want to make films with German money or it applies also part, uh, partly to European money. You have to have a, a producer who lives in this particular European country or in um, Germany. He has to even live in this particular area if you want to access the funds. So um, we, for example, we live in Bavaria and so we can access the Bavarian Film Fund. And uh, that means you can apply for money there. And the German government, so the which is in Berlin, they have also a particular film fund for that. You have only to have a producer in Germany. So um, if you want to know more details about it, I will be happily answering your questions. And maybe Jay can talk a little bit how it was for him to come here and live with this uh, bureaucracy and how life in India is completely different to uh yeah i think uh so for example when i can go back to this first slide amanda pa, and this is the two so uh, for example for when we are shooting amanda pa, that's the first time i, I shifted to germany and uh, uh, like in i mean i worked a little bit in the indian film industry and uh, so there are like really like more people support like you, you have uh, like too many people i mean in in some sense and uh, in in german or here it's more um, like less number of people for example the the cameraman uh, who studied documentary filmmaking here and then they are capable of uh, handling like only one guy they you don't need a focus puller or <laughs> You know, it's it's like he's alone on handling with the equipment and it's it's very small team and then we can really work efficiently. And even for the fiction, this, this is also helpful for us because we, uh, for another film, we did really with uh, a lot of people, a lot of people in German sense, like 18 people. <laughs> and it's also like really, uh, in a way, efficient 
uh, working uh, with the small crew because we we are more working coming from a documentary background it's more close to people and we taking also subject a little bit sensitive and uh, i cannot imagine uh, shooting with 100 people uh, it's i don't know we, i mean we don't know how to I mean, yeah, we never then, did this before so it's more like a, and uh, for me uh, it was also quite a cultural shock because we did one uh, children's short film in india and this is jay talking about 18 people in germany maximum like for a um, mini, mini um, middle budget production you have maybe uh, 30 crew members maximum 40 something and uh, then uh, while we were shooting in india this uh, short film i had the chance to uh, go with a friend of jay who is a cinematographer in Hollywood uh, to one of this immense uh, big sets of uh, Indian film production. And I was like, wow, how is it even possible to handle this much amount of people? And then he told me, yeah, they will be shooting for 50 days for a feature film. And in Germany, in the sense of you have to, for a TV or a um, middle budget fiction film you have maybe 30 days of shooting maximum 35 24 you can also do it and yeah so it was quite uh, quite a cultural shock for me and then also uh, for our short film being in India and in Germany I know that everything is planned you make a contract before you know um, your locations and then you make a contract with the one who is um uh, giving the location, you make a contract with people and then somehow it's in the beginning, it's a lot of bureaucracy and organizing and uh, you have discussions about money and uh, you set a certain price and then um, in the, uh, before it's really stressed, but when the production starts, everything is halfway clear and you know what you do. And in India, it was completely the opposite. It was really easy to convince people. It was really easy to get access to locations and everybody was really helpful and things. But in the end, so three weeks before shooting, they just <laughs> canceled our main location. So you had to improvise. <laughs> and um, that taught me a lesson yeah, to I think, be a little more relaxed. I think we somehow we need to also plan it but uh, we we also need to have a backup that it might not work and uh, so what will happen so it's a plan b or plan c or i don't know or somehow it's it will work out at the end so it's like just to believe and uh, uh, doing yeah go ahead and uh, yeah, and I think I think Jay also was really shocked uh, when we applied when we produced our uh, the, our films for the first time ourselves. How much paperwork you need to do, and you need to submit uh, to get the money, and then when you have the money at the end when you are submitting the film to the funds and everything. So in Germany there is. Um, a lot of things you need to do, a lot of stamps you need to get, a lot of, uh, I mean, um, stamps in the sense of approval from different kind of uh, governmental organizations. Um, there are rules and regulations, which is nice actually to make um, a, a version of your film which is accessible for uh, people who are blind or who are, who are um, who cannot hear properly. So this is also you need to put inside your uh, production budget and think about it. Um, for the for a children's film, for example, you had to get a clearance, not like a censor certificate, but a clearance to what age the film can be shown. Then also they are um, to submitting to the TV channel. They wanted for this, um, they want a different kind of format. They don't want subtitles. So you have to do a voiceover. Germans don't like subtitles very much. So when you want to be shown on primetime television, except Arte, the cultural channel, which I said, um, the Germans always want a voiceover um, or a synchronization of your film. So in all our films, we had to do a synchronization, meaning Jay's parents uh, spoke German on German television. So uh, yeah, these are this uh, concrete particular specialities of Germans. And I think um, the best way would be if somebody has questions, we are open to any questions and uh, just put it in and ask what you want to know. Yeah. So yeah, maybe you can time. just show our video. You don't need to show the screen anymore, right? Yeah. 
So, okay. Is there is a... Okay, do we have on time? Yeah. So the floor is yours, guys. Just uh, put it in the chat or ask us. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. I keep on talking, but yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm back as well. I think we had some uh, technical situation. Okay. And I can see that the 82 participants are back. So I think you can finish your sentence. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear the last one. I, I, I just said I keep on talking till somebody will ask a question. That's what I said. Hello? Yes, yes, all right, we're back on. Um, I, 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 I don't know, do you want to take questions now or should we keep them for uh, the last part? Yes, uh, sorry, I was a little confused about um, our structure, yes. Um, I think um, now the colleague from Nepal uh, will talk about his work and I'm really, really interested to know how he works and how he organizes money for his films and makes his films and... Yeah, the process. Exactly. So, Shika, uh, can we try again to get you? And can you introduce yourself and maybe tell us how your experience relate or not with Francisca's and Jay's experience? Yes, yes, you have the floor now. Can you speak and see if it works? I can see your screen, but I cannot hear you properly. Now it seems like your microphone is off. I'm going to give you back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I um, will try again later. It doesn't seem to work. I We cannot see um, your screen or we cannot e hear you either. So I think we're going to take some questions for uh, Francisca and Jay in the meantime. Um, I saw a question in the chat. You can also raise your hand or write your question in the chat. Um, one of the questions was, what tips would you give a cameraman to be a good director? Francisca and Jay, do you have any tips? Um, since I'm uh, not a cinematographer, um, I think just be, also, so first of all, uh, I think believe in yourself because um, 
I'm also not a producer. I never studied producing and I just had to do it because there was no one else who wanted to do it for, for us, for me. And I think um, to be able to um, do everything yourself. So as a cinematographer, you have the big advantage or the disadvantage that you can do camera yourself, which might and, um, make you able to uh, be more aware of what you uh, um, want from yourself as a director. And I think that uh, you should always um, just go for it. So Jay and me, uh, we had a lot of uh, like when I when I talk about Amma and Appa, as you can see the the first film we showed, um, this was um, our biggest success. But in the beginning, nobody really believed in the film, and either us never expected it to um, even go to Berlinale and everything which happened afterwards. So we just started it as a film school project. I went to my professor and I said, I have this idea to make this film. And he just said, yes, okay. Um, but is what do you want to do a whole movie about yourself and um, your boyfriend from India? And then it came out like this. So um, I can just uh, give you the, the feedback. Just do it. And don't let you get uh, self uh, this uh, motivated by people who are saying you cannot do it or you cannot do it like this. Yeah, I think there's another question. The cultural intermixing oh. approach in. Wait, we have a moderator who will. Uh, okay, um, the cultural mixing approach, if it always works. Um. If you talk about, in a sense, in our marriage, it doesn't work most of the time because um, I think we, if we are discussing about projects, we want to get divorced like every week or so. <laughs> in the sense of um, filmmaking. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, does it work? I think uh, I don't know. It sometimes works, and uh, but we always need to believe in what we are doing. And uh, even with fight, sometimes you get a new idea. So like, uh, I mean, this. Yeah, I think in the uh, creative process, um, we can figure out somehow. But we also uh, been working with um, the same commissioning editors um, on TV. And we sometimes also get the feedback. Why do you need to always do things which are connected to India and in India? And why don't you make a German film? Mm -hmm. um, you have to also um, deal with these kind of feedbacks in the sense. And you have also to convince um, German people also that the world is more diverse and uh, than just um, seeing white faces on television. But I think there's uh, something going on at the moment and the market is changing. Is Mr. there a market for foreign films in Germany? Um, I could say um, yes and no. Kind of. Um... Mm, in Arte, there is, is, that is the cultural uh, channel which I mentioned. They are partly also financed from France. Um, there you can get um, a good amount of money and they are very open to uh, different uh, projects from different parts of the world. So I think, yes, there is a market. And from my point of view, there has to be a bigger market for uh, foreign films in Germany because um, the sad part of it is uh, sometimes the most successful films in German cinema are comedies um, which uh, are made by German filmmakers and then there is a sequel of a sequel of a sequel. So once one um, structure worked out, um, they will do a sequel and sequel and sequel. And I think the Germans, also myself included, they try to imitate Hollywood a little bit. So yes, I think we should have more foreign films, also especially also from Nepal and everywhere. Okay, there is a one more question. What were the unique difficulties you face on? Yes, building there is a question here. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. I was about to ask you the same question. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, what were the unique difficulties you face on building narratives for your films when you both come from 
unique backgrounds in terms of communication. <laughs> do you find any difficulties in understanding uh, nuances in culture and how do you find sort on synthesis? What kind of audience do you keep in mind in building your stories? Yeah, I think. Um, so uh, first of all, that um, the audience is, uh, is basically for um, like German audience and international and like so because um, the money or the main source is uh, from here so we need to make it uh, but do we really keep the audience in mind mm -hmm. i think uh, the the problem is the audience the german audience is very open yeah. i think the the broadcasters which are part of this financing process they are somehow underestimating um the audience so um Mm, so to, to come to a synthesis anyways, as you can see, we are always fighting about everything, but somehow um, we come to a synthesis. Uh, there's also our editor who is a really helpful source. Um, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> so he kind of uh, uh, try to uh, bring us together. I mean, I mean, our different ideas somehow, whatever he says, then, okay, the like, What, yeah. what system where some more wood <laughs> yeah so he's a very uh, dear friend of ours or we are developing um a feature script at the moment so another friend of ours uh, is writing it together with us so we have always a vote of three and then we will do a vote about the decision and then who gets the more votes uh, will uh, win um what is the, uh, then there's more questions i think How do you visualize a scene? Hmm. And what is your main focus inside? So um, I never actually started out to make fiction films. And I never was even thinking about visualizing scenes because I always uh, were very um, interested in people and the lives of people. So uh, that's why I started uh, studying documentary. So for me, it's always the process about going somewhere reacting to it and then visualizing it and working together with the camera person to um, get a visual of it. And Jay comes from a completely different background. Because uh, I don't know, I'm from um, like visual background. So for me, it's uh, for, for especially for animation, I need to know what I'm going to do. So otherwise it will be too much work and then uh, it will work so long for the animation you cannot easily throw it out or you cannot quickly okay let's do it again so for me it's very important to uh, have an idea so for 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 my animation i do storyboards and i really think and then we just uh, do the editing with the storyboard if the editing works with the storyboard and then before i go for uh, like animating each frame because i mostly work uh, in a, in analog or like um, frame by frame it's not a like 3D or like uh, computer generated animations, I work more into like more manual or analog. So for me, it's important to have a really good structure uh, to start with. Otherwise it's, it's so. Um, uh, as I can say, maybe I'm not visualizing it. I come more from the written word. I used to be a journalist and uh, worked for radio and did uh, uh, studied uh, literature before film school. So uh, I'm not really visualizing it. I'm writing it down. So script writing is for me amazing, super great process. And I always have to rely on Jay how to put it into uh, pictures. Yeah. Then there's another question. How European content, especially Germany and social culture, joining the situation of short films? Oh, short films is a little bit of a difficult uh, topic um, in Germany. There are not many of these TV channels are showing short films only in, um, how do you say, Nachwuchs or um, upcoming filmmakers. They um, give a little bit of, um, of money for that. But there's a big, big market of festivals. Uh, where you can send your short film and is, uh, it is shown. The problem is um, more to get money for a short film. So I think for this um, TikTok film, we would have never got money in advance for this film. We just did it and then we showed it to the television. And then they thought, oh, wow, yeah, you can also do a film with TikTok videos. And then um, they bought it. And even when they buy your short film afterwards, it's cheaper for them. 
Yeah. And how much the cinematography of the movie helps the movie to achieve a certain level of visuals? Cinematographer? Mm. Yeah, they, they, they think cinematographer. Okay. Maybe you should talk about Chris especially. Um, cinema, how much the cinematograph? Fee, it, it, they mean how much importance is given to the cinematographer, I think. I think for, for especially for uh, documentary filmmaking, it's it's much, much, much more uh, things re we need to rely on uh, the cameraman for, especially for Amma and Appa when we did, because we both of us in front of the camera and, and, and we are also dealing with our parents. It's more... Uh, so we we just need to rely on the cameraman like completely for the documentary film. And we never had a uh, we never had a monitor. Yes. So so, <laughs> so we need to trust uh, that he's reacting. Uh, so they are also I mean most of the students who are studying in documentary filmmaking camera and they are also really capable of uh, reacting to the situation and. Uh, And uh, like our cameraman for Amanda Pa was a Korean cameraman. He didn't understand. Uh, he didn't any, understand any, any Tamil, of... which was pretty helpful because he just reacted to the emotions of the people. It was surprisingly worked well. And uh, the Chris, the, he also, I mean, he can Yeah. Uh, Christopher is the, the cameraman, the cameraman um, of Nadine Labaki's film. If you want to know about good cinematography coming from a documentary background, you should really watch his film, uh, Kapana, um, which gave him a lot of laurels and stuff. I think that's a brilliant film, how to uh, work in a fiction film with um, a documentary approach, especially in the sense of camera. Yeah. And how many films have you made so far and which one of the most successful one, any particular? <laughs> this thing was the films which we always thought this might be um, more successful or more. Uh, so a success uh, uh, is uh, you need to uh, differentiate meaning success at festivals or success in cinemas or on TV channels. Um, actually, With Amma and Appa, we had Festival was the biggest success and also in um, the cinemas, but this was never expected. And it, it's a funny film. It's a documentary with a lot of music and animation and everything. So um, in the sense of success, uh, thinking of my film school professors, um, they thought it won't be that successful. Also, we didn't think about it. And then our um, our um, diploma film, Shadows of the Desert, where you can see the poster in behind, um, we put like five years of work. It was our hard project. We thought this is, this is it. This is uh, so much of work and stuff. And this uh, was actually not so successful in the sense we got a good amount of money um, to make the film, but Festival wise, uh, not much happened. So I'm have... trying to figure out yeah. <laughs> what is the secret, uh, how to get your film successful. So we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's a mystery. Uh, okay, as a Nepali filmmaker, I found art films. Yes. Thank you, Jane Francisca. I will try to get Shikar again. It, it's yes, yeah, super. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She just crossed this. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> like so, uh, this is how you do I'm it in Germany. Just... Yeah, okay, I just uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you'll be able to uh tell us about your experience regarding what Jay and Francisca um have presented today. And then we can have a nice chat all together right after. So Can you join us? Are you okay? Okay, I, okay. can you hear me now? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay, yes, okay. Bravo. Yes. yes, thank you. Uh, so it was a wonderful talk on? by uh, the Francisca and uh, Jay Krishna. Uh, so it worked. Uh, it worked. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm a filmmaker, but uh, but basically I'm a journalist. Uh, I write uh, columns uh, for the mainstream newspapers, 
and I'm not a trend, trend filmmaker. I became a filmmaker by default. I was working in the newspaper house and then we talk about the stories, the narrative. And, and eventually uh, I made one documentary film. Uh, my subject here is the, the artistic and the, the financial side of Nepali film. So first I will delve a little into the, the artistic side, then I'll come back to the financial side. Uh, this question has always baffled me, the artistic side of Nepali film, because the, the, the history of the Nepali filmmaking is not too long. It's only around uh, over five decades. Uh, our filmmaking uh, started with the, uh, the propaganda film. The, there was an autocratic regime in Nepal that lasted for three decades. And the, the first film made in Nepal was an eulogy to, the, to that system. So it was a kind of propaganda. They they used the ruler used the frame as a propaganda tool to glorify the system uh, they imposed uh, in the country. So that way, the the history of the uh, the film making kick started in Nepal. And in the course of time, because the the Nepali film is very much influenced by the by the Indian films, uh, popular known as the Bollywood. So there is a, the great influence of the Bollywood film in Nepal. And uh, as Jay Krishna may, may, might uh, understand the, the Bollywood film, it has some formula, uh, the dance, the fight, the comedy. And nowadays, uh, because they are, uh, I mean, the, uh, making film larger than life. So this is the kind of uh, the influence that Nepal had from India, and still even having from India. Besides going to the, uh, looking into the regional films that uh, uh, Jay Krishna might better know, Adhur Gopal Krishnan, um, uh, Shatyajit Rai, Gautam Ghosh, uh, there, uh, Sham Benegal, there are many filmmakers in India that we can really uh, take uh, an account of the, the art of the filmmaking. But uh, unfortunately, we are impressed by, influenced by the mainstream uh, Bollywood film, that is the mashala film. And as French described into India, when you take a lot of mashala, then what that, that you will get unnecessary fat in your body and then you have to, to detoxify. So I always say that in Nepal, the film literacy is very much important because you have to detoxify the mashala and come to, to a very slim, slim body and make an artistic film. So artistic film, making an artistic film is a, is a big challenge even today to Nepal, not, not only uh, in case of Nepal, even in India to make an artistic film is an very arduous effort because uh, because it has a limited audience. And given the population of it, population of India, it's, uh, you can find your section of the the people that uh, go for the artistic film uh, because it has a, it has a big population and a section of film might like the artistic film and the way they uh, they loved and cherished Shafiq the way Gautam Go, Shambhinegal, Atul Gopal Krishnan, Apanashin, and many. I mean the the filmmakers in India because they have their own space. But in Nepal, if you make an artistic film, so you have a very limited audience. So that is the biggest challenge. And the film has an art. So it is a, it is a, uh, it is an expression of art. So there, is to be, there should be an element of art. But you have to balance how you know, to uh, make a film and in the meantime to find a financer to a financial film. So that is a big challenge. Uh, but I I am very much happy with uh, with one fact these days, not in, in, not in India, uh, or the other countries in Nepal. So the film has there is a shift of the the, the filmmaking because uh, in the earlier days the film would be obsessed with the superstars and the masalas and the, they have the star obsessions. Nowadays the film has gone to the characters. You can see the characters. Uh, taking the pivotal role in the uh, role in the films. Uh, in the case of India, you can uh, you can see uh, Irfan Khan, Nawazuddin Siddiqui, Raj Rajkumar Rao. They are doing wonderful jobs because they don't look like uh, I mean the the macho or the hero or or the, the the people who is larger than life. But the film has gone to the the characters, which is a very good thing to Nepal uh, to make a film based on the characters. This is a very good thing. Uh, so, so there is still a challenge to make artistic film, and the financing. If I if I talk about the financial side, so people ask me the white kind of documentary you make, and I say as a singer, sometimes I sing a song and sometimes I sing a jingle. 
because you have to sing a song for yourself and you have to you have to work for a jingle to sustain yourself so sustaining yourself is a big question and uh, i have found many uh, my creative uh, uh, filmmakers uh, friends who um, have started uh, in a very affluent way uh, and they had made a beautiful uh, fiction and non fiction films but they are having very difficult time uh, to sustain uh, 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 in the field of making flame and the, to give the best uh, of their creativity so that is a big challenge uh, because the financing flame is, is a very big question uh, how to finance even i will give you give you a couple of examples how the flames are made in india by the great filmmakers for example uh, jack wilson might know shambhenegal when he made uh, that film manthan in 1976 so he didn't have money so it was the flame based on the cooperative uh, people who uh, who uh, who sell milk to the cooperatives so he uh, there, there was a cooperative uh, that had millions of the farmers uh, under the umbrella and he uh, he had 500000 farmers and they, each of them donated 2 rupees uh, to make a film uh, that was named manthan and he made uh, 1 million in rupees uh, so the the producer of the film was the farmers in the hinterland of gujarat and the, each of them donated two rupees to shambhenegal to make a film and he made uh, he uh, collected uh, 1 million rupees and made a film manthan with uh, smita patel and shudin uh, shah and it was a wonderful film so it was the first example of the crowd from crowdfunding in india so now nowadays we we we, we call the crowdfunding is very much uh, uh, there so people go around and because of the social media and uh, people have access to the many people of the world uh, from here and the rest of the world so they can uh, rope in the uh, finances to make their film but that time shambhenega had the farmers to crowd crowd fund uh, film for himself and i also uh, met one rin ponji he keeps coming to nepal he is a wonderful person his name is uh, norbo khense last year he film one film called daki in nepal i was uh, i went to the one out to to see how the films are film is made he is a he is a buddhist point of highest uh, accomplishment but he is a filmmaker he had made wonderful film like the travelers in magicians the cop bara and many many more films and he gets little money from his disciples just maybe a, a couple of dollars from one of the disciples and that way he he he, he makes a pawn and make film so this because if you get a big fund from the big people you have the uh, accountability to certain person because the as the law of economics uh, economy goes uh, return on investment roi so roi is also there in film so how uh, further you can compromise with the with the, with the producer so this uh, this is a big big issue uh, to find up on uh, i have seen uh, some of my friends uh, 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 going around uh, in some of the film festivals uh, with the script uh, uh, for the prom and grants and that way they also uh, have managed to, to make uh, beautiful films like alapoti uh, there was a black hill shetu surya white sun so these films were made in the recent times uh, from the fund uh, from the film festivals uh, around the world so some some avenues have start opened for the filmmakers in nepal to Um, I'm hoping uh, funds for the film, but but you can rely on this kind of funds. Like this, in in our country, we say uh, we have agriculture based on the months. If there is a rain, you have a good harvest. If there is no rain, there is no harvest. So it is uh, it, it is uh, accidental. Uh, so you cannot rely on the funds that uh, some somebody else might give you. This is a good thing that some people might give a fund, and you can make a. Mega film is a good thing, but you cannot rely on other people's um, uh, will uh, to make a film. So this is a this is a big big challenge for Nepal, and uh, people are making the film in two ways. Some people are making making artistic uh, film because they get fund from some of the film festival. There are some of those. There are many choices uh, based in Europe and America. They they finance young and emerging filmmakers, and that way they make a, they, they make film. and broadly uh, if you uh, want me to speak about nepal in a year nepal nepali filmmakers make 100 films in in one year but these are the mainstream films 100 films a year 
and hardly five films may recover uh, the investment. And the nine, 95 films will, will, will get flopped and they, they, are, they, they will get up money back. Uh, so uh, this is a this is a big big uh, I mean, challenge and uh, the best thing would be if you balance uh, the finance and artists, but that is not possible. If you uh, I have not made any fiction film, but I have made some of the documentaries, and I have very strange sto story to tell you. But when 2003 in, in year 2003, I I made a debut. I made one documentary film. I didn't know about the documentary film, uh, so documentary was shown in the universities where I where I studied in the, in the United Kingdom. So it was uh, the medium of pedagogy. So I was very much impressed with the documentary. I want to make I wanted to make one documentary, but I didn't have fun. And I had an accident uh, in in London to, uh, in year 2000. I came back here and I had filed a case there, and I got some money as compensation. And then I made one documentary film in 2003 out of the money that I get from the, uh, the compensation. Uh, so there was a, it was a documentary film uh, on the uh, professor, one very uh, learned person. He is a professor, he is my mentor who taught me, writer, dramatist, uh, interesting person. So I made one documentary on him. And then henceforth, I wanted to make more documentary, but there was a lot of fun because there was no fun how to make a documentary film. And uh, the problem would be if you make a documentary film, where you will show the documentary film? There is there is no no other painful screen. Even today, documentary films are shown in the in the festivals, not on the television, not in the theaters. It is only shown in the film festival. Sometimes people get fun. Um, I mean the prizes uh, in the film festivals, but that is uncertain. And people are slowly drifting away from the creative creative side to. To sustain themselves, like me, I'm an example. So I have been, I have uh, made, uh, made over uh, two dozens of uh, the documentary films. Hardly five for myself, and rest for the, the donors, NGO, INGO, for their purpose. They they give me they they give me some money. They commission for the for the film, and that why I've I've been making documentary films. And the same is happening with the, with the fellow filmmakers uh, because uh, the, the documentary film has no, I mean, the forum to, uh, I mean, to screen itself, to show to the larger, larger audience. Because um, I have seen uh, in France, there is uh, the television RT. Uh, uh, I have also seen the United Kingdom because there are some, some television channel, they, they entertain documentary film. But in Nepal, there is no channel uh, to screen documentary film, uh, let alone the film, uh, film theater. So this is the, I mean, the biggest um, uh, the challenge. But I would say, but because I want to see, uh, I can also see a silver lining uh, in the filmmaking because uh, you can make a film uh, based on your experience. You can make a film of your native uh, experiences with the native narratives. Uh, you shouldn't be influenced by the the larger than life Hollywood and the Bollywood because they are not making. I mean, uh, it was all mashallah and it's a, uh, it's a it's a commercial uh, filmmaking. But you can uh, you can really learn from uh, the filmmakers, the, re the regional filmmakers, the Bengali filmmakers, the, the filmmakers from the south like Atul Gopal Krishnan, um, Sen. Uh, there there are many film filmmakers in India. They are making the, the film uh, with no budget. And and I feel the being a citizen of a small country like Nepal, I also feel that uh, we, the people of Nepal can excel in the soft powers. We can make we cannot uh, compete in the uh, other areas with the rest of the world. But you can make a beautiful film. You can create music. You can create create art. So this in, in these areas we can really excel. Uh, so we can, we can learn from the the countries where the people make film with a low budget. For example, Iranian films. If the Iranian, they don't have the big fun to make their film, but their film really touches, touches your heart because the kind of films they have been making in Iran is an example in, in the world. I have seen many, many, many parts of the world. So we have to learn uh, from the countries with, with the similar experiences. We cannot learn from the Bollywood because we, we can never compete in terms of the volume, in terms of the finances, in terms of audience, we can never compete. We can never compete with Hollywood because Hollywood, we have seen 
the I mean the most of the Hollywood films are the science fiction because it has nothing to do with the life. There is no life. It's all fake. It's all all unreal. It's a fantasy. Uh, so so these are the two aspects: uh, the artistic aspect and the financial financial aspect. And other thing I would like to mention: I am also a member of the Kashmir International Modern Film Festival. It's the biggest uh, running film festival in Kashmir. I am a member of organizing committee. And every year we organize uh, the film festival, and and we also have some little fund for the aspiring filmmakers. This year we gave grant to four filmmakers, the documentary filmmakers, little money, but we want to inspire the people who want to make the the, the documentary film, uh, three, four people all the time, and and, uh, and likewise we also have the story piece in doc lab. Some people have some ideas, but they don't have the technical idea. They have the narrative in their mind. And they can think of some subject so that they can take the film out of that. But they might not have color editing and other other nuances of the technical 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 uh, enterprises. So, uh, yeah. so yes, hi. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Um, Yes, um, I was wondering if we could talk a bit also, we talked a lot about uh, producing and funding, yes. and I wanted to have um, your insights as well as um, Jay's and Francisca about what comes after uh, promoting the film. Um, how can you build a network? What kind of festivals do you target? Um, yeah, yeah, festival, um, Nepal is a very ideal, uh, I mean, the place for the festival because even a small uh, nation and a small, a small town, the like capital itself, but it hosts many festivals because of its location. Uh, the people from Pakistan may not go to India, people from India may not go to Pakistan, people from Pakistan may not come to Bangladesh. So Nepal has become a neutral space. So we have many festivals that is happening in Nepal. So festivals is, uh, is really fueling uh, uh, for the filmmakers, it's it's had really helpful for the filmmakers, and the festivals also uh, provides you a, a forum for the networking because you you invite the people of the many countries. They come to the festival, and there's interaction with the filmmakers, the film lovers, and the promoters. I have seen some of the filmmakers; they have really made contact uh, through the festivals and gone out of the. Out of the out of, out of the nation and and and, and gone to the the broader I mean, avenue. So film festival has really been helpful. Helpful, but but this is not um, I mean the complete picture that the people make film and their film really and get noticed because we should um, uh, pave the broader way uh, so that the many people should come and remain in the in the film of filmmaking because the retention is a, is a big I mean, problem because. People have dream, and sometimes you have uh, you are over enthusiastic and make film, and and then then your your emotions and your aspiration are subdued, fizzle out, and then you drift apart to the other other areas. The retention and the I mean the sustenance is a big question. And um, Jay and Francisca, you mentioned that your short film you were able to sell it right after. Uh, what was uh, promotion a big part of uh, making this sell? And um, what kind of festivals did you uh, target with this film? Yeah. Um, if, uh, the, 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 the selling the short film afterwards, this was just out of luck because we have uh, made another short film before with this commissioning editor we were working in, she is for upcoming filmmakers in Bavarian broadcasting, so very, very regional. And uh, she liked our work because um, our last films also uh, were shown on Bavarian broadcasting. And then I was in submitting the previous film and she just asked, so what are you guys doing at the moment? And I said, yeah, we have this in the pipeline. We shot it already because we shot My Mirror actually just but right before the pandemic hit Germany, we just came back two weeks before uh, lockdown from India. We are also not quite sure if we had Corona or not, because we were like two weeks really sick after coming back from India. So uh, we were editing this film and we had nothing to do in the lockdown. And um, this was also lucky because maybe uh, because the film school was also closed 
during that time. So a lot of film school students didn't do their short films. And she was somehow lacking of short films. And then I told her about the film and she was like, wow, okay. She watched it and afterwards um, she said, I will talk to my boss. Maybe we can um, acquire the rights uh, for the film, which they did. But uh, it has also a downside because um, they have all the online rights forever and ever of this film. So <laughs> it's, um, yeah. And then um, to get network, pff, uh, okay. there are these uh, in Germany, you, uh, you have to, as a filmmaker, also get network to the funds and get to know the people of the funds. It's very, very regional. Everybody knows everyone. So the, the film industry is kind of somehow like a village in Tamil Nadu. And everybody is uh, like when I went to India, it felt like this because everybody is talking about everyone and everybody knows everyone. So um, it's just uh, you keep on sending your proposals to the people and hope that they will be interested. And uh, when you have one film which was okay, successful doing in Germany in the cinemas or won an award or was nominated for some German award, it might be even a regional award, you might be on the agenda of these people and they might be interested in hearing your um, next idea. So this is somehow um, how we got network. But I think for us, it was also a really good network is the film school. There um, to any... Um, Nepali filmmaker who is young and uh, who has access to good institute, I can just recommend learn German and try to get an admission at the film school because they will really, they really like uh, foreign students. There is um, from Munich Film School, there was a Mongolian film of a wonderful filmmaker, The Story of the Crying Camel, which was even nominated for the Oscar. And she came from Ulaanbaatar to Munich and studied there and the film school gives you the chance of making your films and it doesn't cost or um, so in India people are always surprised when I say that um, the education in Germany also in France um, doesn't cost it's not like Great Britain or US um, so I would recommend everyone I think the Goethe Institute is one of the organizers of this event <laughs> uh, or part of it go to the Goethe Institute study German or French um, and just uh, try it from that side and I could recommend uh, to Nepali filmmakers also a certain kind of markets which give a super good network um, for uh, when you have already the idea of the film when it's already in a little bit of production and then from there it even starts off to the festivals i learned that so um there is for a documentary there is a doc edge called kata it's a pitching forum um, where you can present uh, in goethe institute um, your documentary idea you have to have um, a small trailer a pitching trailer they will do a workshop with you and then a lot of funders from germany from europe come there to calcutta And even we had to go there to meet some people which we would have never met in Germany or in the film school. So this was an amazing event. Then there's Dhaka Dog Lab in um, Bengal. In Bangladesh. in Bangladesh, sorry, not in Bengal. Calcutta is in Bengal and uh, Dhaka is in Bangladesh. So I can recommend this also. You can apply for it uh, with your documentary. And um, to really get your... Um, Your fiction on the ground, it's in India, Goa Film Bazaar at the Goa um, International Film Festival. And they also accept, I think, films from any South Asian region. So meaning it not it doesn't have to be a film in India. Indian language, I think. So you guys should apply for this. And I think it's this year um, online. Because of the pandemic, uh, so maybe you can just get a pass as a delegate and just check it out and see all the talks and things. So I think that's a cool uh, space. Yeah. So. so thank, thanks a lot. Um, we actually have a lot of questions. We won't be able to take them all, but um, somebody asked about. Uh, 
uh, how you were impacted by uh, the pandemic and um, if uh, um, production uh, in Europe is um, starting again and uh, if uh, screenings are allowed. Can you answer, Jay and Francisca, please? Mm, so actually, uh, the, uh, also I wanted to add uh, to Shika's uh, explanation. Um, also, we cannot live with the money we are making with our films. <laughs> We also have also artistic films is also difficult. We also have side jobs like I'm writing and Jay is doing graphics, but we are starting to build. And the pandemic, um, it's uh, two sides. So filmmakers like us who are more in the independent field, they were really had uh, hit very bad. And uh, but the German government has put some. Um, funds which you can get as an artist filmmaker to somehow pay your rent something but um, the big uh, but all the productions have started now I was just uh, working for a German um, TV serial primetime uh, like uh, it's about uh, it's a funny poly serial which is set in Bavaria <laughs> As a uh, uh, what uh, 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 assistant director, and they are doing full on production, so they uh, everything is going normal. They are testing twice uh, a week at the set, and most of the people are vaccinated. So yeah, production is going big, and uh, they are shooting so much than never before because the pandemic closed on so many sets and it's even difficult to get uh, adequate uh, personnel, so meaning assistants and stuff. So yeah, this is, we are still on hold <laughs> with this, what we are doing, but uh, the big productions are going yeah, on. I think we also planned a lot of uh, films in India, so which we cannot travel yeah, true, now. Yeah. So we try to <laughs> figure out mostly shooting it in Germany, Germany and yeah, that's... yeah. So we had to change our ideas in the hands of the pandemic. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, um, to wrap up, I wanted to ask Shikar and then Francisca and Jay if they are working on any specific project at the moment and if they can tell us a bit about it. Uh, Shikar, what are you working on at the moment? Uh, yes, I'm working in a different way. Um, I'm not making a film, but I'm promoting a film through the festival. So this year, uh, in December, uh, we have the we have Kakuni International Mountain Film Festival. So event is, is going there. Uh, so event is promoting more film. Uh, uh, for the last many years, I have been associated with the with King. Uh, uh, this time also, um, we have many entries. Uh, despite the pandemic, it's very encouraging. Encouraging that we are getting the film all over the world. Um, this time also, we have chosen the digital platform. But I'm not uh, working on a film per se for myself. But uh, I'm associated with the film festival and promoting film in, in the other way around. Yeah, I think um, so. Uh, we are now um, like writing our first uh, fiction uh, feature film and uh, like script, and we also got a little bit um, support from the Bavarian uh, like film fund here. And uh, like so that saved our life actually. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> because because of the pandemic, another reason we have to stay at home and uh, just writing or like. Uh, Spending our time researching and uh, like thinking about a different project. So we had another project which is in, involved in uh, traveling to India, but that's so. Yeah, I think that's right that now we didn't are. Didn't materialize. Yeah, so right because now, the Indian are actually not giving visas to foreigners at the moment, so <laughs> <laughs> I cannot even um, go there. Uh, only with emergency visa or something like this. Um, so, yeah, I think we have like the one fiction feature film, yeah, which is but, called Bride Without Dowry. So it's also like about uh, Indian, uh, I mean, like Sri Lankan uh, immigrants living in Munich. And uh, it's also kind of cultural clash. But uh, yeah, I think we try to figure out what we can do. It's actually a romantic uh, drama. 
So um, we came, or Jay came together with me to the idea we were sitting in our kitchen and listening to the Bavarian radio. <laughs> and suddenly there was this news, um, Indian man uh, tries to extort 50,000 euros of dowry from, uh, from his uh, parents-in-law, and he was living in a suburb of Munich. And I was like, wow, um, I told it to Jay, he understood it. So we were like, wow, this is also like in hair. And the German police, the Bavarian police somehow caught them or whatever. And um, actually we wanted to make a documentary on it, but no one wanted to be part of it. So it became a fiction. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we have like a lot of other things are happening. I mean, we know our own experience. So we try to write a script and uh, yeah, but uh, i just have to tell uh, we we um it actually the couple really falls in love after their arranged marriage and it's about it's actually a love story and how to get rid of all the expectations of culture and parents and things so a lot of jazz uh, experience where and, is going yeah, it's also from actually from connected to my mirror because the 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 both of them are playing again for the like fiction fiction film because we for my mirror is also kind of experimental project that uh, we are we have this feature film in yeah, mind. Actually, these guys motivated us to make a script out of it. So <laughs> when we are discussing with them and then yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, see. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up this morning. Uh, thank you to all the speakers and the participants. Uh, this was uh, for the Nepal EU Film Festival. I have a, re a request. So uh, we are at the moment 55 per participants. It would be super nice if everyone could turn on their camera and we'll take a little print screen picture of all the group. So can you switch your camera, please? And then we have the tech taking a picture. Uh, Mohan, can you tell me when uh, when it's all done and it worked? <laughs> Sorry again about all the technical issues, but I think it was quite interesting and successful. Yes, uh, yes please, uh, all of you, again requested to turn on your videos if possible. Are we all good? Well, yes, thanks we again to Francisca, Jay, Shika, um, the EU delegation in Nepal, and have a good festival. There will be some other panel this week. And I wish you a good Sunday. Thank bye -bye, you. Bye bye. Everyone. Recording stopped.